All right, friends, let's move on. Let's 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 continue with the with a segment on the disposal. So, like I said, once we purchase any organization, subsidiary, associates, at a point in time, if it happens that the, the parent company wants to dispose it off, it disposes it off. It, it will sell it, okay? At the end of the day, we sell to make profits. If we don't make profits, we, we make loss. Sometimes we break even, but uh, you most likely find yourself in the two ends, whether a profit or a loss. So in the case of disposal, what are the techniques? What are the mechanics? Nothing is changing, okay? Nothing is changing in terms of goodwill and CI calculation, okay? But we'll introduce just two concepts, two different elements, okay? In the individual books of the parents, how do we record it? And in the consolidated accounts, how do you record it? So these are the two things, okay? These are the two things. It is expected that you prepare a, a, a different presentation, a different um, account for the individual in their books, in the books of the parent, individual books of the parents. Then you consider that of the consolidated statement. Those are the only two things we are looking at, okay? And they are easy. Same story that you know, if I know I have sold an asset for 10000 and in the books, the current amount is 8000 then in my individual books, it's 10000 minus the current amount, okay? which gives me a profit. Otherwise, it could give me a loss, okay? So the cost of my investment, which I keep in the books, the current amount, I compare it to what I sold it for, and it tells me whether I made a profit or I made a loss, okay? I share my screen, and then we move on from there, okay? All right, so looking at disposals in terms of business combinations, okay, and our learning outcomes, our learning objectives are just two. Just two. Okay. All right. So we're looking at how we can explain and illustrate the effect of the disposal of a parent's investment in a subsidiary. One, in the individual financial statements of the parent. And then two, in the group account. That's it. In the group financial statement. That's it. These are the two. Okay. To take an overview, so like I said, we're looking at the individual financial statements. And it's typically looking at gain on disposal. So the, 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 the proceeds, I'll simply compare my proceeds, okay, versus what? The current amount, okay? The current amount of my investment, okay? Of the investment. When we come to the group financial statements, we will take two steps before we come to identifying whether we made a, a, a gain or a loss on disposal, okay? So one, we we'll look at the net assets again as at the time of disposal, up to the time of disposal, okay? We we'll still look at the goodwill. On this subsidiary that we had, what, what, what was the goodwill overall? Because once you are disposing it off, you're disposing it off with its goodwill. So we need to capture it, okay? The NCI, we've, we've, we've recognized this NCI in our books. So once we are disposing it off, we need to get rid of everything NCI from our books, okay? So that's the very reason why you see the net, net asset compared to the post-acquisition reserves and, and then the pre, and then look at what happens, okay, the difference between that time, okay? And then we're looking at the goodwill, disposing of all of, okay? And then our NCI to determine whether we made a gain or loss. At the end of the day, once you, you sell something, you make a profit, normally you pay some tax on it, some tax taxation comes on it. So, in terms of the gain, consolidated figure, which one do we tax? Is it the individual or this one? So, taxation, okay, comes into play here. But, however, the tax that we will be considering is that of the one which appeared on the individual statements of the, of the group, of the parents, okay? Not of the group. So, if you are giving tax, it's charged at 30%. After you've de 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 defined or determined the gain on disposal, apply the 30% here, okay? If you end up getting a figure, let's say, let's, let's, let's say any, any figure, let's say 500. After you've gained this disposal figure or again on the, dis on the disposal for the group, you don't need to recalculate the 30% on this gain again. You still retain the 500. You still retain this 500 which we took from here. 
That's the only thing you should note. Don't recompute the tax on the gain on disposal again. All right. Okay, so disposals, we're looking at um, reflection. How should, should it be reflected in, in the parents' individual accounts and then in the group? Like I said, the calculations are different for both sides. This is pretty straightforward, but here we need to consider our goodwill, okay? We need to consider our, our, our NCI and the net assets, okay? And in fact, and in fact, the formats are different, okay? The formats are different, okay? Slightly, let me not say different as though they are, the concept is different, but it's slightly different because we have to inculcate these other elements when defining the gain or loss on the disposal of the subsidiary. We need to we need to consider all these guys. That's why the format changes a little. But understanding the concept behind a disposal of an asset is the same. Okay. All right. Now let's move on and see. So in the parents account, like I said, you simply look at your sales proceeds, what you sold it for. And then you also look at the current amount of the investment, the cost of the investment. Assuming you are not giving the current amount in the books, use the cost of the investment as a current amount. Now you end up getting a loss or profit in the statement of profit or loss in the parents' books. In the parents' books, okay. How do we report this? How do we report this? So we normally will show this separately as an, as an exceptional item on the face of the statement of profit or loss. Right after the profits from operations, we bring this one there, okay, as a gain on disposal. Gain on disposal of... Um, of a subsidiary. Similarly, you realize when we get profits from associates, we record it right after the profits from operations. So we cluster all of them after the profits from operations so that we can know that there are other income which we gained, okay, from, from our activities. Again, like I said, the tax payable by the parents or group is calculated only on the parents' profit, not the group profit. Only on the parents' profit. Not so. This particular profit we gain, this is the one that we tax, multiplied by the tax rate, and whatever answer we get here, we need to take it to the group account. So it will always be important once you see the tax element in the question that you must prepare this working as a first step, and keep it to be able to determine your your tax, after which you carry it forward into the group account. Okay, all right. Now. Um, usually in the professional exams, ICAS, ACCA, I have seen mostly from ACCA, um, they will examine you on the full disposal of a subsidiary, not partial disposal. Normally, they will, they will examine you on the full, okay? There are partial disposals. Uh, a, little, a little trick there, not too much of a headache, okay? But we're not looking at that. We're looking at full disposal. Now, what is the impact on the consolidated financial statement? So in two things, two ways, okay? In terms of the profit and loss account, what we have to do is that the subsidiary results will be consolidated up to the date that we disposed of. Okay, so if we dispose it off in September and the year end is from January to December, we have to consolidate it in the profit and loss up till September, prorate, prorate all the figures, then after which we dispose of, okay? And like I said, we need to recognize the profit or loss on disposal right if it's a profit, right after the profit from operations, okay. Alternatively, we could treat this as um, discontinued operations, okay. Um, I think IFRS 5, okay, which, which superseded IAS 35, very sure of that. Okay, IFRS 5 talks about the non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. We could ultimately treat it under that, okay, all right. What about the statement of financial position? Okay, we we do not consolidate it. You you dispose it of. Why do you consolidate it? Okay, somebody will say why not consolidate it up to the point of um, disposal? Consol financial position is prepared at the year end as sat as at. But so it is one of at the year end we we do that. Of course, we prepare these accounts every now and then. But one will see the asset position as at a particular position. So no need for consolidation of the disposed of subsidiary. Again, any profit or loss on disposal must be included within our retained earnings of the group. 
of the parents. Any retained, any the profit or loss that we made on this disposal goes there. Okay. So this is the format. Doesn't really change much, but we introduce one or two concepts. Again, it is our sales proceeds. Okay, number one. And then we look at the net effect of what we've had. What was the net asset at disposal? What was the goodwill? Goodwill is also an asset. The goodwill at disposal, okay? And then the NCI, which doesn't really belong to us. It belongs to third party, to somebody, okay, third party. We subtract that portion from the total assets and see. So in effect, in effect, you can say that the whole of this trade, the net effect of this, gives us more or less the current amount. The, the current amount, yes, it gives you the current amount of your investment, okay, in the subsidiary, and then this is the current amount subtracted from your sales proceeds, and you still get profit or loss in the in the consolidated statement of profit or loss, okay, in the group account, okay. That's all we are looking at over here. Question is. Does anything change in terms of goodwill calculation? No. The same goodwill that we know. The same goodwill. You have your cost. Add the NCI um, valuation. Okay. Subtract your, your net asset, identifiable assets of the subsidiary. You get your goodwill on disposal. Uh, sorry, your goodwill at acquisition. But this time, it is at on disposal. That's why I brought it in. You get your goodwill. And then if there's any impairment, subtract it. Then you get your final net goodwill at disposal. Okay. The same thing to our NCI. You know NCI. It's fair value. It's share of any impairment of um, goodwill. And then it's share of any post-acquisition reserves. Then we get our, our NCI at disposal. The same story. The same calculation that we know doesn't change here. The same thing doesn't change here. And I think for our standard workings, we used workings three for goodwill, right? And we use workings four for NCI. Nothing changes. Okay. So everything here remains the same. It's the old story. We are still revising. Okay. All right. Let's 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 move on. Then we can wrap up soon. You may be required to also calculate one or more values in the above calculation. Um, net assets. Okay. Same standard working for identifying the net assets. You know the net assets. Okay. Uh, but we we must make a column for acquisition, disposal, and post acquisition. This helps especially when there is a partial disposal. It happens, okay. However, if necessary, we have to calculate a mid year. Uh, if there is a mid year disposal, we can use it, okay. The asset, the, the the format for identifying the net assets is simply to identify our net asset brought forward. If there is any profit on this, um, up to the date of disposal, add it to the net assets. If there is any loss up to the date of disposal, subtract it. Okay, and then any dividends we have that have been paid to the parents prior to disposal, subtract it because you want to see you want to get a net effect of the company. So if there is any profit component, add it to the existing asset that we have. If there is any expense that has been paid. Okay, clear it from the asset so that you get a net effect. Okay, then you get a net asset at disposal. Okay, this net asset is the first element we find here. That's the first thing. Okay, that we should find over there. All right, so it's the same concept. If you want to find a net asset at any time, okay, or any any time, you 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 have you have your your beginning balance, whichever you have retained earnings brought forward add any profit over over the year or less any loss over the year any expenses paid out of these dividends paid out of these profits subtract it then you get a net balance okay it's nothing much to worry the head about you can easily identify this okay like i said goodwill calculation nothing changes just remember to deduct any impairment don't say well i'm disposing it off so whether whether there's impairment or not, I don't care. It's just my goodwill, I'll recognize it. No. Be prudent. Accountant expects you to be prudent enough to recognize any impairment that has occurred. Make provision for this, okay? Any any NCI calculation, same standard procedure, okay? Let's take one example, then we will we, we, we'll wrap up. Paul acquired 80%, okay? Which means NCI portion is 20%, okay? Of Simon for six million. 
that is the cost of investment right cost of investment cost of investment if no other figure is provided for this investment we will so maintain it as what our carrying amount of investment okay at which date the net asset of simon um yeah net assets of simon had a fair value of five million you see and then the fair value of non-controlled interest was already valid so we've already been given the nci fair value it makes life easy okay um on 30th of june paul sold all all of his assets for this so these are proceeds right these are proceeds which remains in in both areas okay at this day the fair value of the net assets has been seven okay so you can see your post acquisition here right that it was now seven million at the time we are disposing the time that we acquired it had a five million okay which gives me two million so you can easily apply your nci portion to get its share of post acquisition okay so um, if nci is 20 percent to get your nci's share of post acquisition right of post acquisition you need this when calculating your your um your nci figure okay goodwill had been impaired by 1 million at the date of disposal paul values nci using fair value tax is charged at 30. all right so once tax has been charged his, his tax rate is, is provided we need to work the two okay calculate the profit after tax on disposal of simon to be shown in paul's individual so we want the individual okay and then the consolidated so you can see that the individual one is so easy right it is a proceeds of 8 million okay the 8 million that we had here less the carrying amount carrying amount 6 million okay of 6 million which gives us 2 million right now our tax component would there be was 0 0.3 30 percent of the 2 million i think this are 600 okay yeah exactly exactly yep this are 600 okay so we are going to be applying this 30 percent on the 2 million as a profit on the individual giving us 600 okay 600 thousand this tax is what you also carry forward when dealing with a with a group with a group profit okay now once we have easily identified this okay we have easily identified this the next thing is with the group consolidated we need to first work our goodwill okay we need to first work our goodwill we need to also find our nci okay it's easy to find the nci what is the nci value in the question 1.2 right 1.2 million we must add its share okay its share of um, impairment 1 million okay so you find 20 percent of 1 million okay and you also add its portion of the post acquisition i think i did it somewhere the extra the 7 million less the 2 million fair assets okay so again it's 20 percent of the post acquisition and you are, you are okay with the nci goodwill as usual okay goodwill let me let me let me plug it here goodwill as usual is the cost of investment okay which i think over here is given as six right um we then add our nci fair value which is given us i think 1.2 if i'm not mistaken here right and then we subtract sorry did i add we subtract the the fair value of the assets at acquisition okay which i think gives us five million right then we get a goodwill if there's any impairment okay so you, you subtract the fair value fair value of assets okay at acquisition and if there's any impairment one million you subtract the impairment okay and then you get your net goodwill 
Nothing is complicated here. You get your net goodwill. All right. Anyway, I've, I've messed this one up, but let's go step by step. You'll get it. So like I said, the, net, the sales proceeds was $8 million, right? Carrying amount, the cost of investment, 6 And then we get profit on disposal of 2 Apply the 30% on this figure, and you get 600 This figure, we need it. We need it, even in the group account, okay? So the profit after tax for the individual accounts of the parents is 1,400. 1,400, okay. Now, the detailed one, like I said, is the cost of investment that we know, as usual. We add our NCI, okay, fair value given, 1.2. Net assets at acquisition, we subtract, right? 5 million, we get 2,200 at acquisition. There was an impairment figure of 1 million. This is what I'm saying, that the NCI will take 20% off, okay, of, 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 of 1,000. Okay, yeah, one million actually, which gives us 200. That is it. Okay, and then we get the goodwill at disposal. Goodwill at disposal. Okay, yeah, so we, we less. I was illustrating it on that on that screen. Okay, and again, we less any impairments. Okay, so our goodwill is given as 1.2 in the question. Add its share of the, of the impairment, which is 200, and then. The post acquisition reserves seven minus five. I was illustrating it okay at acquisition, it was this at the time we disposing, it was this, and then we find 20 percent 400. So we get this as our NCI. Okay, so finally, we can now prepare the profit. The same process that we sold it for comes here at the date of disposal. Okay, what was the net assets of the company? Seven. 7 million okay that's a profit goodwill at disposal is also part of the assets add it to the net asset of the subsidiary in a non-controlling interest subtract it subtract it it's not yours it belongs to external parties third parties subtract it then we get this so typically you can say this becomes your, your carrying amount okay you become your carrying amount after factoring in all of these so your process less the carrying amount if you want 200, that's a profit on disposal. Do not be tempted to find 30% of this, okay? Do not be tempted to find 30% of this. Now, it will give you 360 because the question says tax is provided as, 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 as 30%. It will give you 360. That is wrong, okay? We must actually find that use the tax which we have already calculated, no need to recalculate. Okay, so do not be tempted to do this, else we get everything wrong. So we maintain the 600 from the parent's individual account, which we have already calculated, and we get a profit after tax as this. Very easy, okay, very easy. I end here. I'm going to be, as usual, I know some of you may not have the exam kit, so I'm going to provide you a similar question like all of this okay and out of these two i'll bring you just one it doesn't really change much okay i'll just produce one question okay and then it's similar to this which will make life easy for us so at least at least let's target let's target getting some some five questions on this okay we should target some five questions on on this okay on on disposal for our tutorial Okay, for the tutorials, and we'll be good to go. I'll still post some extra questions towards the exams time, at which point we can we can look at this, okay? But it's pretty straightforward. Once again, chapter 21 deals with the disposal. Please read and get yourself acquainted with this, with this area. All right, so 24 minutes. Okay, that's good. Within 25, we end here. Friends, good to see you, and... Um, all the best. Once again, please, nothing is difficult. Um, nothing is difficult in this. It's just, it's just, it's just a, a, a practice. That's all. Practice more. Get used to the mechanics. You see any question, you can do it easily. And you'll be fine. You'll be fine. All right. Take care. See you. Bye.